It's time to look at some operations on sets. We now know what sets are, how to represent sets. So how can we combine sets? What can we do with sets to put them together? For numbers, we've got addition, multiplication, subtraction. There's also ways to combine sets. And those are what we call the operations on sets. And that's what we're going to look at now. So to get started, the union of two sets, A union B. The symbol we use looks like that. It's not a U, capital U, it is a union symbol. The union, A union B, is all the X's where X is an element of A or X is an element of B. If you've done some logic, you know you can rewrite that as all the X's given X is an element of A or X is an element of B. So that means X, whatever's in the union can come from A or it can come from B. It can come from either of them or both. So what that means is everything together from A and B. The intersection of two sets, and we're going to look at examples of all of these shortly. The intersection of two sets is all the elements X where X is in A and X is in B. So X has to be in both of them. This A and B has to have that number in common for it to be in the intersection. The difference, and we'll look at notation shortly. This is the notation we use for difference. A without B, the word without is sometimes used. And I will use that in my examples as well. A minus is also sometimes used for difference. And in the examples I'm going to do, I'm going to interchange the two notations. But generally, it's wise to pick one notation and stick to it. But I'm going to use both because these are both common notations used in set theory for difference. So A without B means everything in A that are not in B. So every element of A that are not in B. And we're going to look at it nicely with examples. And the complement of a set. A with a little C up top. Now also, there's another notation for complement. Oh, here it is. The other notation is just a little bar of prime. A complement can be written as A prime. We'll look at this shortly. It's everything in the universal set that's not in the set A. So we can look at it as a universal set without A. Take A away from the universal set. And with examples, this will become more clearer. But yet again, there's two notations that are common. There could be others. I'm going to interchange between them. But just be aware, it's better to pick one notation and stick to it. And if you're using a textbook or no written notes, there will very often just be one of the two notations present. And then just to note, disjoint, the word just disjoint, two sets are disjoint if their intersection is the empty set. Meaning if those two sets have nothing in common, if on a Venn diagram they don't, there's nothing that they share, then they are called disjoint. So we're going to jump straight into examples. I've got a list of sets here. P, Q, R, S, T. P, Q, and R are subsets of natural numbers or integers. S and T are intervals. We can draw all of them on a number line if we want. S and T are the most significant for me to draw, but I'll do all of them. These numbers range between 1 and 6. All right. So P is 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's P. Q is 2, 4, and 6. R is 1, 3, and 5. S is everything from 2 to 5, but 2 is excluded. 5 is included. And T is everything from 0 to 3. Oh, I don't have 0 there. Naught. T is everything from 0 to 3. Both included. All right. Now I've got a picture of what these sets look like. Now if I want P union Q, that means, look at P and Q. It's everything from P or from Q. So whatever's in P union Q can come out of either of them. So what we do is we throw them all together, P and Q. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Q has 2 and 4. They're already there. And 6. So P union Q is everything from P and Q together. Well, P intersection Q is what they have in common. It's what they share. Something that's in the one and in the other. So if I look at those two sets, 
What I see they have in common are the numbers 2 and 4. So 2 and 4 is in the intersection. All right, the difference, P without R, what this means is I start with P, and I take things from R away from it. So let's start with P, 1, 2, 3, 4. R has 1 in, so I'm taking 1 away. R has 3 in, I'm taking 3 away. R has 5 in. 5 is not in P, so I can't take away, so I ignore it. I don't add it. I don't do anything with it. I'm just taking away what is there. So that means I'm left with 2 and 4. So P without R are the numbers 2 and 4. All right. S union T. Now we're looking at the intervals. When I take the union of two intervals, it's everything in S and T together. That means I'm going to start at 0, go all the way past 2, to, then I'm already in S, all the way to 5. So it's from 0 to 5, both are included, because it's at least in one of them. But if I look at the intersection between two intervals, you can see it's only this little piece that they share in common. Only that piece. So from 2 all the way to 3. Now let's just look. 2 is in the set T, but 2 is not an S, so 2 cannot be in the intersection. While 3 is in both of them, so 3 is in the intersection. And then Q without S, I start with a set Q. What does Q have? 2, 4, 6. Sorry, Q has 2, 4, 6 in. I take S away. S has got a lot of stuff in. But I'm only taking away what is actually in Q. So I start with Q. I look at the number 2. Is the number 2 an S? No, 2 is not an S, so I don't take it away. So it stays. What about the number 4? Is the number 4 an S? 4 is an S, yes, so I take it away because I want Q without S. So I'm taking 4 away. Number 6, is it an S? No, it's not an S, so 6 stays. So Q without S is 2 and 6. All right, some more sets. Now I'm given a universal set. As soon as I'm giving, given a universal set, I know that the complement could come into play, and it is in this case. So if I look at these sets, my biggest possible set is from 0 to 5. That's my universal set, everything colored in. Now, yet again, you do not have to sketch the number line if it's not asked, but if you prefer, if you solve these things more visually rather than looking at the sets themselves, if you like to see the pictures, it's a good tool to use. The set M has only the numbers 1 and 2 in. 1, 2, 3, 4. So let me put them all there. M has the number 1 and the number 2 in. That's M. S is everything from 2 to 5. 2 is excluded, 5 is included. T is everything from 0 to 3. This is the same S and T as the previous example. But let's see what we can do. T union M. Put them together. T and M. Now, if you look at M, M has the numbers 1 and 2 in. But they're already inside T. So T union M is a bit boring. It just has, it's just the set T. Everything from 0 to 3. So you can write it like this, or you can just write T. Because everything, both elements from M is already in there. What about S intersection M? Okay, what does S and M have in common? Well, 1 is an M, it's not an S. 2 is an M, it's not an S. They've got nothing overlapping. They've got nothing in common. Empty set, that's my answer. They've got nothing in common. All right, let's look at T complement. That means I look at the universal set. Everything that's in the universal set, that's not in the set T. So I go to my universal set, everything from 0 to 5. I take T away from it. And I'm left with everything from 3 to 5. Now, I haven't put the brackets on because you've got to think carefully. 3 is in T. So it can't be in T complement. I took it out of the universal set. And it goes all the way to 5. All right. T without S. Take T. Take S away. So I'm taking away what they have in common. T without S. If I take S away from T, I'm left with everything from 0 all the way to 2. Am I left with 2? Well, 2 is in T. It's not an S, so I didn't take it away, so I am left with it. Now, an, a little bit of an ugly set. S union M. If I put S and M together, I've got a lone standing number 1 here, and then I've got everything from 2 to 5. So the way we write that, 
is it's the set with just one n. Union with everything from 2 to 5. We can't write that simpler. That's all I've got. Because 2 now links up with this empty hole when I take the union. But 1 is still standing apart. So S union M is made up of two parts. M's complement. Oh, this is even uglier. M is only made up of the numbers 1 and 2. So what have I got left if I take 1 and 2 away from the universal set? The opposite of 1 and 2, the complement. Take 1 and 2 away from the universal set and what am I left with? Everything from 0 to 1, but 1 is not left in the complement because 1 is in, in M. Then I start again at 1 and I go all the way to 2. Then I start again at 2 and I go all the way to 5. So M complement is everything... That is not M. Now, in the next video, we're going to be looking at some more complicated examples using the operations. We're going to combine some operations and work on that.